when you've got drive and energy, motivation, integrity, we can teach you the skills. But if you hire on skills, we can't teach you integrity. Yeah. We can't teach you motivation. So really it was about finding those those young dynamic people that had done their drinking, their travelling, their womanising, got all that out of their system <laughs> and, and, and really just wanted a career and someone to support them and back them. And that's what we did. So we really we really have a, an ability to empower young people and then we put them into a partnership and then what we look at uh, straight away, what, what I look at is, okay, what's the budget on this business? Is 10% enough? And if it's not, how do we build the business up? So 10% dividends every quarter it means something. It's meaningful. Yeah. Mm. You know, giving someone a thousand dollar check after three months isn't meaningful. Giving someone a hundred thousand dollar check after three months is meaningful. Yeah. Wow. You know? Life changing. Uh, mm. Yeah, it, it really mm. is. And we've, yeah. we've paid our dividends over the years. You know, a small dividend check for a quarter would probably be about eight to ten thousand. The big one, the biggest one I've seen was six hundred seventy thousand. No one's ever lucky. I, mean, I think the only lucky game in life is where you're born and then you make the rest. Stick around, it's going to be a good ride. I don't believe in luck. Luck right. is where you're born, make the rest. Oh, I heard someone, Jeez, someone, very, someone very noble <laughs> said that. I've like, got it on repeat in my head. got a good one there's today. No, there's got no a real luck good in, question for the no boys. I want life. a good straight in answer. You're born, I actually think it's going to divide Australia. Now, oh, so what was that? So, go, so remember, we're too busy winding you up. Have I got a good one for the boys there? I've got a really good question. I actually think it's going to divide Australia. But I want honest answers. That's all I want. That's all I asked for this morning. Okay. I was at mum and dad's on the weekend. There was a bit of a family barbecue going on. Kids are in the pool having good fun. Some of the kids went to the toilet. Some stayed in the pool. <laughs> now, this caused a big debate. Man. Now, me personally, I don't get out of the pool. Fucking life sentence. Oh, I do not get it's out of the pool. life sentence, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Never going in the pool again, dude. 100%. My kids are convinced. Actually, it's true because it's true. Purple ring man. Oh. <laughs> well, you haven't it's, heard. It's not true, mate. It's true, man. It's not true. So I've seen it. I've tried. I've tested in every pool. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not coming around, mate. Right, getting your kids out of the pool, drying them off, getting them inside. It's a bit of a mission. Yeah. Well, my, my kids. I don't, I don't get out of the pool. I'm, much. Not, I'm not asking. Yeah, I don't care. I don't <laughs> want to know what you're doing. My kids get out. They just don't travel too far from the pool. <laughs> <laughs> you got all deck around your. No, there's a palm, there's a palm tree. <laughs> so some of the family members were shocked that. I didn't go to the toilet. That you took I, that I just, stance. That I just stayed in the pool. I'm like, well, there's chlorine. What I'm do you think shocked. chlorine does? I'm shocked, dude. Why? Well, that's disgusting. When you're in Bali and you're at the pool bar. Oh, that's different. What everyone, are you doing? Well, are you when, doing? When they're like, everyone's doing it. Lance Armstrong, <laughs> you know. I think, Dan, you know what? It's something that people are doing, but no one's talking about. And maybe we should leave it. No, yeah, yeah, no exactly. It's taboo. It's taboo. Ask is, that, is, that what, is that what that means? Just ask the mm-hmm. question. No, no, I think it's topical. I think it's controversial. <laughs> Let's leave it there. All right, done. <laughs> Let's get into it. Get into it, boys. Welcome back to Australia's number one podcast. We are the little fish and we speak to the big fish about town each and every week. We talk property, development, construction, mindset, business. Business is a big one today. We bring as much value as possible and bring in the best guests on the planet. Thanks, guys, for listening or viewing, however you're consuming us. Please like, share, subscribe, interact. Give the algorithm a push for us. We love it. Mm. Let's get into it, guys. This guy's been an entrepreneur from a young age, acquiring businesses and selling them. His company, John's Ling Group, which was acquired in 2004, turning over $12 million per annum, now turns over circa $850 million, boys. Ooh. How much? $850 million. Wow. How's the growth? Big growth How's there. the growth? Over the last 18 years, achieving a compounded growth of around 25% per annum. Wow. That's aggressive, boys. Yeah, that's that's just... aggressive. He holds the exclusive license to Nike Retail here in Australia and New Zealand. This guy's a genuine leader. He leads by example. He provides his people the platform to grow, excel, and succeed under his model. I can't wait for this guy. Scott Didier. Yeah. yeah. Imagine, oh, imagine the sneaker collection, man. It'd be pretty cool. <laughs> It'd be pretty good. <laughs> is, that where you'd have, is that where you'd have a wall of sneakers? Oh, for sure. Do? Do you, mate? Jordan 1s, 2s, 3s. Welcome. See ya. Thank you. Wow, eight hundred and fifty mil circa. That's a growth. That's growth, that's isn't growth. it? From twelve mil. Yeah, that's growth. Yeah, flip around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's serious. That's serious growth. Thanks for coming on, Scott. No, no worries. Thanks for having me. We'll get you nice and close to the mic, Scott, so they can hear you, mate. That's another slab, Walkley. <laughs> the boss in the background, he says. <laughs> Turn the phone off. Turn the phone off. The live studio good, audience. Good pickup, eh? Good pickup, eh? Um. 
Yeah, thanks for coming on, Scott. Thanks for having me. We'd like to start, so a boy from the northern suburbs of Melbourne, modest beginnings, car, a vinyl layer, sorry, carpet layer, vinyl layer, um, from, and from the very start, an entrepreneur, it feels like. Um, you grew and built a resi flooring company, sold that, had a non-compete there, so got into the commercial space. And in the commercial space, you laid floors and did it over a night time. So you did the work, the undesirable work that potentially others didn't want to do. That's so you saw an opportunity there that others don't want to do it. I'm going to do it. And and through that, you saw opportunity and you, 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 know, you grew that. John's Ling Group, you bought that in 2004, turning over 12 mil. I want to start there, boys, um, because there's a lot to talk about from now from there until now, how do you buy a company like that, and what drove you to buy to buy that to buy that yeah, company? Yeah, why, why John's then, Ling? Yeah, 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 and then launch into that, and and even in that space, it's a it's a construction company, disaster relief type type company. So, yeah. why did what 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 appealed? Um, John's Ling was John's Ling was appealing to me because I, I knew Robert Ling. I had a previous uh, association relationship with Robert Ling, and John's and Ling Builders were. A, a top four Melbourne builder through the 70s and 80s and had a very good reputation. And I knew Robert Ling to be a, a really uh, upstanding individual, a guy full of integ- integrity and credibility. He was, yes. he, he was and still is a, a very honest man. Um, so it, it was very easy to go forward and, and, and um, explore the opportunity there when, when he rang me and said it was for sale. Um, so knowing that, it was a pretty good footprint to launch from. And then looking at the space, um, Robert was in a relationship-based business, you know, working in the insurance reinstatement sector. Yes. He's all about working for insurance companies, loss adjusters, insurance brokers, et cetera. That, that was, wasn't was dissimilar to my flooring business. My flooring business was all about working for retailers, you know, Coles, Woolies, Kmart, et cetera. We had construction managers that just fed you repetitious work. So it was very, the models were very similar. Um, Robert was a, a, a pretty quiet fella. Um, so there was an opportunity to build relationships and go and get new accounts. So it just sort of was sitting before me, if you like, thought, well, I can, I can grow this um, just by building out relationships, what we've done in the flooring business. So I just saw the opportunity and knew it was a, knew it was a very honest business to go forward with. So, you know, th- there was, there was um, nothing to be too worried about from the integrity point of view. I, yeah. wonder, I wonder what Robert's thinking these days. Yeah, Robert, just quietly. <laughs> yeah. and, and John, and John. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think Robert did pretty well. Yeah, yeah, he did. He, he retired and, 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 you know, pretty pretty uh, wealthy fella. Yeah, and there's no doubt you've taken it and absolutely run with it, 25% year on year and not, not fluked it, not 25% year on year for three years, you know, nearly 20 years now. Through different, different market conditions as well. I mean, that's a long time. There's a lot of ups and downs, GFC in there. Yeah, we're very we're very lucky in the space we're in. We're not we're not uh, glued to uh, economic conditions. You know, we're primarily glued to weather events and natural disasters. Yeah, so you know, trees still fall on houses when there's a GFC. Mm. There's, there's always a, something in there. There's a you know a, a coronavirus outbreak. You know, someone's still going to run in someone's letterbox. So yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So so that was part of the appeal. It was. You do you you know. Um, you excluded yourself from from the greater market conditions, and you know the work's always going to be there. Now, now you bought that company. Can you talk us through where it started? Maybe how many staff, um, sure. and and you know slowly take us to yeah. the beast it is today. Yeah, sure. Um, when I bought the business, there were thirty employees, and it turned over around about twelve million dollars a year. I've uh, been pretty consistent with that. Um, primarily working Melbourne Metro. Yeah. Um, not too much outside of Melbourne Metro. Um, very quickly, we, we very quickly we broke the business up into four separate companies because John's Ling at the time were doing insurance work, but you know it could be doing a $150 dishwasher leak repair, or it could be doing a $2 million fire. Mm. And you know, as you, as you know, there's specialist trades and, and different expertise required to do those you know types of works. So we broke it out very quickly into four separate companies. We we broke it out into Express Builders, which was work under $10,000. Insurance builders, which is work over ten thousand dollars, make safe builders, which simply goes in and makes a property safe after a, a fire or a flood, and Restorex, which is contents restoration for water damage. Mm. Um, so we broke into those four companies very quickly. We then implemented uh, what I call our eighty twenty model, where eighty uh, percent of the business is owned by the group, twenty percent is owned by two two managing partners. Um, 
I needed two managing partners at, at the top of each business because I, I'm not a builder. So I needed builders mm. and those people, those expertise. And I also wanted them glued to the business so that I didn't, you know, I didn't uh, walk on eggshells with them. You know, there's nothing worse than walking on eggshells with staff. They're going to leave, they're going to stay. I wanted them to come in and have true equity and then we grow their business and then share in dividends and profits going forward. So we set that structure up very quickly within the first six months. Oh, so that was early. Mm. That, was that was early. You got that going, yeah. We got that going really early because yeah. we couldn't get a line of sight of accountability. So yes. we, we didn't know, okay, is, is, it, is the make safe division doing any good or, or not? Well, I don't know. Bill Bill was on that $2 million fire and he went over and did it, but I'm not really sure. And you just yeah. couldn't get accountability in, in, in the work or the financials. So we need to specialise and, you know, we set up those four divisions and, and they didn't cross over each other. Yes. So if you worked in MakeSafe, you didn't work on anything else. And that, that was sort of the start of the platform. And then we took that platform then around Australia. So it's a bit like a, a McDonald's. That, yeah. That's the model. And it doesn't deviate. It's an 80-20 model. Yes. That's what you do when we just took it uh, around Australia and it, that, with that. Yes, yeah, Scott, I guess I want to ask, so you've, you've divided um, John Ling's into four separate individual companies. So when you get these 20% um, owners of these companies, how did you handpick those four people at the very start? Was there something you've seen in the <laughs> employers already or did you go out and put some job abs out? Yeah, like- it's, a, it's, a, it's a really good question, Dan. It's probably, probably my passion spot, if you like, as far as growing businesses go. It's all about the personnel. And we defined, we cloned the uh, the name Rockstar Talent. So if you hear that from anywhere else, that's ours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we, what, what we say is we, we look for rock stars. Um, I, I always recruited off, off gut feel and I, I always recruited uh, for integrity and look for motivated people that I could go forward with. Um, I was very lucky in 2011 to meet a gentleman by the name of Kurt Mudd, who was a HR manager for Nike Global. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they say that Phil Knight didn't do anything for eight years without checking with Kurt in, in Nike Global. We were lucky enough. Uh, Kurt's still on our board and he was lucky enough to work alongside me in Australia for nine years. So Kurt took my clunky way of recruiting, uh, which, which worked and it was fine and made it tangible. And so we recruit a very certain way um, to find the talent, the partners we can go forward with. So the three things we recruit for uh, are driving energy, mm-hmm. motivation and integrity. Uh, if, if that's what we recruit for first. After we identify those things, then we look at your skill set. So as it stands in John's Ling now, um, people don't get a resume on a first interview. Um, we're not interested in the skills because if you haven't got integrity, drive, and energy, motivation, mm. actually don't want to go forward and with you. We can teach the other. So we can, we can, when you've got drive, and energy, motivation, integrity, we can teach you the skills. But if you hire on skills, we can't teach you integrity. Yeah. We can't teach you motivation. So that's the thing we look for. So really, it was about finding those those young dynamic people that had done their drinking, their travelling, their womanising, got all that out of their system, <laughs> and 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 really just wanted a career and someone to support them and back them. And that's what we did. So we really, we really have a, an ability to empower young people and then we put them into a partnership and then what we look at uh, straight away, what, what I look at is, okay, what's the budget on this business? Is 10% enough? And if it's not, how do we build the business up? So 10% dividends every quarter it means something. is meaningful. Yeah. You know, giving someone a $1,000 check after three months isn't meaningful. Giving someone a $100,000 check after three months is more. Yeah. Wow. You know? Life-changing. Uh, mm. Yeah, it, it really mm. is. And we, yeah. we've paid our dividends over the years. You know, a small dividend check for a quarter would probably be about eight to 10000 A big one, the biggest one I've seen was 670000 Oof. Yeah, for, for young, How do we, any, any jobs going? I know, I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> any job, you've got three blokes here that wouldn't mind a sneaky. Yeah. I wish I knew this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a good model and it works. It's a win win. Great model, you know, yeah. They, 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 everyone works their tails off and, and then they get rewarded. But it's not it's not just the financial things of the dividends, it's it's more the thank you that everyone appreciates. Mm. You've acknowledged me, you're thanking me, you've validated me, and, uh, you know, they just soldier on. That, that then in turns, uh, so at, at the top level, myself and, and business development team, et cetera, we, we grow the business and we go and uh, build relationships and pick up new accounts at a top level. But all these business partners, mm. once they see what it means to their P&L and they start understanding it, a, a profit and loss report and start understanding you know, that, that revenue equals dividends, they're selling. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, they're yeah. selling like crazy. Yeah. So we've we've got over 110 business partners now. So all they're, up they're there. all pushing up. Yeah, that's crazy. So we're, while we're getting sales up here, they're also pushing. So we become a very much a, a big sales based organisation. Jeez, and it hinges on those good yeah. people, right? So on, just good. You've got to people find that you people. can trust. Yep. And fun, funnily enough, uh, I'd say 65 percent of our people don't come from the building industry. Yeah, they're just people we've taught. Yeah, okay. People people we've taught and just, you know, drive and energy, motivation, integrity that want to learn. So they're like sponges. They go, teach me. 
Yeah. And we, we've dabbled in that a little bit too as well, haven't yeah, we, which Pete? Is, which, which is crazy because the you know when you come into it for the first time, you're a building company. All right, so where have you built? Where have you built? What do, what do, what are your skill sets? Experience. Experience. Yeah. Who have you worked for? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And then you're asking those questions probably second, but you've reverse engineered you it. it. You get the right people and you can teach them the other thing. Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you a really live example um, of, a, of what I call a bad hire. We, we've got a guy in our Gippsland office. His name's Scott Reed, really good guy. Been a partner there for about seven years. He came up last year and he, and he looked really tired. And I said, Scotty, what's wrong? He said, oh, I haven't had a weekend off for seven weeks. We're flat out. You know, I haven't seen the kids and da da I said, mate, who's helping you down there? He said, I put this guy on three months ago. He's good, but, you know, can't get any work past five o'clock, can't get any work a Saturday, you know, just won't. so I've got to do it. You know, I said, well, tell me about this guy. What's going on? He goes, oh, you know, he's a good bloke, but you know, how old is he? He said, he's, he's 65. I said, 65. Oh. I said, you're asking a 65-year-old guy <laughs> to work 80 after hour hours, 80-hour weeks, <laughs> weeks, and Saturdays. I said, Scotty, don't do that to the fella. He did it, he did it 30 years ago. Yeah. I said, that's a bad hire, mate. I said, I, I know what you did. You got the resume and looked at his skill set, didn't you? He said, yeah, that's exactly what I did. Yeah. I said, well, don't, don't be um, unfair to that gentleman. So put him in a, ro- a role that's nine to five yeah. and find someone else. I said, that's, that's not his fault, mate. It's your fault. Yeah, yeah, um, so yeah. it's a bad hire. So we can't, we, we, we can't hire for that. And the, the other thing, sorry, you got me on my, my t- uh, the subject I like the most is culture. So w- when you when you're recruiting a certain way, it defines your culture of your business. And I think a lot of organisations throw the word culture around really loosely. Mm. You know, we've got a good culture. We've got this. Well, okay, what defines your culture? Well, what defines your culture is the personnel you recruit. So if you recruit people for drive and energy, motivation, uh, and integrity, generally you've got a, a young culture that's, mm. that's all been a Red Bull. You know, they're yeah. full of life, they're full of energy, yeah. they're, they're hot, you know, they're, they're going. Um, and that defines your your culture of your organisation. I use the example of Bunnings. I said, what do you get when you go to Bunnings? You know what you get when you go to Bunnings? You generally get an older person uh, who's got patience for you to talk to you about your DZ, self-adhesive tape for 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they, don't, they don't brush you, they don't, they don't yeah. you know, they, they, they've got time for you. Um, that's no fluke. Yeah. They've, they've hired for that, right, yeah, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, that's, that's just, I think it's really good. It's when you, when you hire for culture, you create a culture, you know, yeah, yeah. You, can't, you can't just that's hire, super smart. you can't just hire here, there and everywhere and go, we've got a good culture. Yeah. Yeah. It's not right. That's, that's funny. That's, that's a fantastic example. Well, we've been asking that question nearly every week. What's culture? How do you get good culture? And that's and the Scott's, most articulate. Yeah. yeah, yeah 100%, that's the best I've yeah. heard of an answer. I guess one, uh, Scott, other question is, so you've said that they've got to have drive, integrity and what was the other motivation. Bit? Motivation. motivation. So then how do you identify those three things within an applicant? Uh, you, you, you see it. It, it, it. It's sort of, I think it's your perceptiveness and being a little bit street smart and you see it in people. You know, you've just Gut got feel. to, yeah, I think, I think I'm probably the main recruiter in our business where you just, you just see it in people. Like, yeah. give, you, give you an example. I hired, um, I hired two guys last year, four months apart, and I recruited them from F45. The two young 25-year-old, into your building company. Trainers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're two young, two young uh, trainers. I, I go there on a Saturday morning at 6 o'clock. They're there. They haven't got a hangover. Yeah. They're dynamic. They can, uh, they can hold their own in front of a crowd. And I spoke to the, the last guy I put on. His, his name's Dan as well. I said, Dan, you just finished uni. You're at 45. What do you want to do? He said, oh, Scott, he goes, all these people are lobbing jobs at me. You know, I, I'm not, not sure what to do. I said, Dan, how about this? I said, how about I talk to you about not, not a job? I don't want to talk to you about a job. How about I talk to you about a career? Mm. He goes, oh, no one's spoke to me about a career. <laughs> yeah, I said, right. well, Dan, what we have is we, we, we want to put people on to be potential partners and we want to see that in people. So, you know, I see the driving engine in you. I see the integrity in you. I, I see all those factors. Mm. If you apply yourself for this, I, I can give you a career and work into a partnership. Um, he started about six months ago. The boys can't wrap him up enough. They just said he just goes hard. Mm. And we, we've just um, expanded into the USA. And he came to me two weeks ago. He said, look, I want to go to the USA. I want to be a partner. Wow. So, oh, you know, wow. That, and is, is he going, Scott? Is yeah, he, he'll go. He's on the, yeah, he's on the yeah, plane? Yeah, he'll go. He's just giving me shivers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, shivers, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's <laughs> the sort of – but we ha- – when we hire people, it's got to be mutually beneficial. It can't yeah. just be about us. Mm. It's got to be really good for them as well. And when it's mutually beneficial, it just works. And all these years later, Scott, doesn't matter where you are, that's your dialing in. You're looking yeah, for yeah. you're looking for talent, Always. and if you identify it, yep. you beeline the for gym, them at the gym. On at the Saturday gym, man, morning. I love it, man. It I love it. It doesn't matter if, where they come from. You know, you know how some people just step forward off the line. Yep. You got to identify those people that step forward off the line. You go, man, he's he's got something. That's a good analogy as well. Yeah. There's a bit of an edge there. Yep. And then you you, you start talk, talking to them. You know. 
So they just need an opportunity, just need an opportunity. someone to believe in them. Everyone, and needs, yeah. everyone needs someone to back them. You know, I, I was very lucky. I, I look back and I say, you know, uh, Robert Ling backed me. You know, I'm sure all of us have had someone, you know, just, just say, look, I'll, I'll back you. I'll this support guy. you. You yeah. know, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Everyone needs uh, someone in their corner. Yeah, 100%. And that's the thing the, the whether it's tertiary education, whatever it is, it's starting to take a back seat to the person you are. Absolutely. The person you are. I heard, yeah. heard you in a podcast say, Scott, when someone says to you, I want your job, Scott, you do just get you excited. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Come, come get it. Yeah. Come get it off yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly, because they're driven. Yeah. You know? They'll be the ones in there Saturdays and Sundays and doing the extra hours because they want to get there as quick as they can. Is it hard to retain them though, Scott? You know, because you need to be able to progress them at a rate that yeah. keeps their appetite, yeah. keep feeding their appetite. Yeah. So the business needs to be growing. Got to be conscious of it. Yeah, yeah, in parallel yeah. otherwise. And that's yeah. a really good question because what happens when you get dynamic people who step forward off the line, they don't stay in the one rung. Yeah, because yeah, they get, they're bored, looking they get to, yeah. bored and dissatisfied. They need to be satisfied all the time uh, to, to satisfy their, their, their needs, you know, their career needs. So you've got to, you've got to be very aware that they're not plateauing, mm. that they're not saying on the one rung that you're advancing their career and, advance, and in turn that advances your business and, again, that gives you growth because you're raising the bar all the time for these people to step into, yeah. you know, so it gives you growth. But you've got to be aware they go, hold on a tick. I lost a guy about three years ago that really still irks me um, that we he was on the – the rung for too long and he took a job somewhere else and I, I didn't see it quick enough it's still and it's still, yeah. still annoys you today yeah. yeah really yeah you don't you don't like to lose good players Scott like well they're players. hard to get aren't they like to get the real like you said they the are. rock stars yeah. they're not the the needles in a haystack they are. And, and you've done the right you've got them you've done, done the hard, the hard work yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you got them yeah. and then you lose them we've it, let them down I, I feel we've let them down you yeah. know what I mean I've, I've said look we'll, we'll see we'll see the dream I haven't lived up to my my part of the deal yeah. if, if he's got dissatisfied. And then it's a little bit too late as well if they come to you that's at that right. point because I think that that's happened to us before or actually I've done some recruiting before from someone else that had a rock star that I identified and we wanted to bring over and then they went back with another offer and I was like, well, man, if they, were, if they thought you were, they were, you know, if they knew that you were worth that, why weren't they already paying it sort yeah, of thing? That's so, right, yeah. You've got to be in front of it. I think you've got to be in front of it and yeah. give, give first. You know, yeah, um, yeah exactly. You got to give first and believe that, that it'll be fine. Some yeah. bloody great advice there, because yeah, that's a yeah. problem as a builder we always have. There's always chippies looking, you know, to move on or go to a bigger you know, project manager somewhere else and things like that. So, always, I guess, having the carrot just there in front of them yeah. and being ahead of that, I guess. Yeah, is, I think you raise a good point there, Dan. It, it, everybody's offering the same thing, you know. So, what's your point of difference? Yeah. What mm. can you What can you offer these people that no one else is going to do? Everybody's going to offer you a job. Yeah. It's the same, same. It's all vanilla. It's the same, same, yeah. same, same, same. Okay, what what can you offer different that's real and genuine that no one else can offer? Mm. You know, and then you get them because it's appealing to them, and then you retain them provided your career path them. Yeah, you know, so. especially so, you, Dan, in a business like yours. You know the chippies and stuff. It's a revolving. Yeah, it's a revolving door. But I guess once you get the good ones, if you've got one. And the, the path is probably to bring them into the business if they're if they're yeah. good enough to get them off a career. Yeah. Off a career, yeah. Benny, Benny, here's the thing: is people that step forward off the line, they don't fail. Yeah, yeah, they don't spot fail. On. I'm sure we know people in life. You go, you know what? Wouldn't matter if I gave that guy the keys to my fledging bus company in Shepparton. Mm. Yeah. So please go and fix it. He'll fix it. Yeah. yeah. Because some people just don't fail. Because they just don't stop. They don't stop. They yep. won't. They won't allow. They won't allow themselves to, and and their integrity piece. And it really, when you boil it down. Is they've been brought up where their word matters, so they won't allow their their um their credibility to be tarnished. Yeah, they've given, yeah. They've given their they're, word. Yeah, 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 know, yeah. We, we, we had a guy that there's now our um uh, insurance brands manager for Australia. You know, he, he was a carpenter on the tools eight years ago, and we've career path him through and through and through. And he's an amazing guy because he just delivers, and he's always delivered. And I spoke to him one day. I said, Josh, you, your word means so much to you, doesn't it? He said, Scott, it's everything. He said, if I tell you I'm going to do it, I I, I will do it. And it just, it, it's it's my intellectual property. It's, it's in, me. Yeah, in you know? mm. So you've got to find those people and then go, you know what, I'll back you because you won't let me down. Mm. It's not in yeah. you to let me down. Yeah. You know? But you've got to look and search for that. So we so we take that back to those those three three pillars that you mentioned. That's right. And then they come on the team and then you've got to back them. You've got to get in front of the game. You've got to give first. Yes. And you should be comfortable to give first. If you've got that bit right. You believe in them. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. believe them. They're not going to let you down, and no. you're not going to, yeah, no. let them down. No, it's you, you, amazing. You've got to then support them to get to get uh, to a very successful um, outcome. You know, yeah. so support them and help them get there, and then drive them into good dividends. <coughs> so then you look and say, okay, um, these dividends are meaningful. 
do I need to get a couple more accounts? Do I need to bolster your business up to make sure your dividends are you're taken home to your family? Because when they take it home to their family, it's meaningful. Then you get the wives on board, the families yeah. on board. Full everyone, buy-in. Yep. Full yeah. buy-in. You get everyone yep. on board. And and the, because the families benefit and it's, and it's meaningful, it, it, everyone's happy. Everyone's happy. Can I, can I um, pivot just a little, a little bit here, Scott? Where, where did you get all this, I guess, knowledge and experience? In the intro, Pete pointed out, you left your school in year 10, you're laying vinyl, you know, and that's hard work. I guess, yeah, we're, like you're such a smart guy, I, I especially think, business, ac- your business yeah. acumen is as good as anyone we've spoken to. Like, yeah. where does that come from? I, I think I think it just boils down from upbringing, you know, it, it, and it's a lot of it's just street smart and, and perceptiveness. You know, you've got to be able to read people and find things and look probably deeper. I love the street smart. Yeah, you've got to be yeah. street smart. You know, I think it's great. You can't see it on a resume, but if you find someone street smart, it's really good. And I think that just, you know, growing up, I grew up in a, in a very working class family, you know, in, in Greensboro. Parents, boy, throw away. Boy, yeah. Parents, parents, you know, didn't have uh, money, that's for sure. So, you, you you know, if you wanted money, you had to go and work. And my parents were pretty, uh, very social. They were they, they like to drink, my parents. <laughs> <laughs> and there was always a house full of people. So I think at early age, you'd go into your house or you'd, you'd come home from your mate's place or, or footy training something, there'd be 20 people in your house, you know. So you, you had to figure out who was friend and who was foe. So <laughs> you, you, you had to sort of, you know, as a, yeah. as, a, as a young person, you sort of think, okay, what's going on here? So you do, you become street smart. And the, and I guess the, the better, you, the, the further you travel down the path, the better you got the more passionate and clearly we can hear how passionate business is, is your thing. Yeah, it, yeah, it is, it is. But, but you know, let me tell you, I, I didn't come from a formal education, so I've made every mistake under the sun, mm. uh, no doubt about that. But you've, you've just got to pick yourself up and dust yourself off and, and go. Yeah. Yeah. Find the good people. Yeah. Surround yourself with good Surround people. Surround yourself with good people. Is that what's what's yeah. that other saying, Scott? The the, the dickheads hang with dickheads. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, it IT nerds hang with IT nerds. Athletes hang with athletes. Golfers hang with golfers. Drug addicts hang with drug addicts. Dickheads hang with dickheads. But <laughs> good people hang good people. Uh, I'm That's laughing because I've I've hung in a few of those. Few of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> You've cut them, Benny. You've cut them. You've cut them out. <laughs> Mates with a few and of now, them. Now you're hanging around good people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. That's that's fantastic. That's fantastic. So. Let's let's get to where we are now. Big acquisition, acquired a company in the states, similar That's right. similar to what you do here. Yep. And you public listed John's Ling as well. Can can we touch on that as well? And then maybe sure. we go to the America, the the United States acquisition. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we we floated John's Ling in two thousand seventeen. Um, that was um, sorry, excuse me. Floated John's Ling in 2017. That was really good, and that's that's been a, a bit of a shift in, in my in my business life in, in a sense, but very enjoyable. Um, a lot of people said oh, I wouldn't like it, and and, and the, you know probably pack it in, but I, I really do I really do enjoy it. I like working with the investors and like working with the people, and I like expanding the business. And what and sorry, Scott, what's the main difference between having a company, privately owned company, your company, to a public company? How's your role changed uh, and yeah. What's the what's the outlook? Yeah. The, the, the difference hasn't been as much as uh, people would have thought it would be, only because I always had a partnership model, so we always did it with a straight bat. We always did things, you know, you could order anything in our company prior to floating and it, it'd stand up, you know. We just did everything by the book, uh, which is fine. So we didn't shift anything, you know. It wasn't as if I ran personal things through the business. I never did. Mm. It was just always done, you know, I had partners, so you always did it uh, properly. And, and, and to letter a little law. Um, when we went public, we just, you know, we just have, have to be and we are very respectful to investors. You know, people put a lot of money into the company, so they, they, they want to know what's going on, so you've got to communicate with them quite regularly, uh, which is good. But, but I, don't, I don't mind that. You know, most of our investors are really good people and um, I'm, I'm happy. They've, they've, they've been good enough to, to support us. I, I, I certainly want to show them respect and keep them in the loop. So that, that's fine. And probably the enjoyable part is, you know, we have – uh, the funding to expand, you know, yes. as, as a private company, you know, you, you can expand, but all of our expansion was organic. So now we can do acquisitions. Nice. Can you explain that for me just a little bit? So how well, does that work? Where did, so the funds, the guys, you know, that shift from private to public, yep. it's all the money that people that buy the shares and stuff that becomes capital that the business can then use to grow. Correct. So that's the, yep. that's the reason that you that's the go, juice. that's the reason you go public. That's the reason you go public. So you can get you access capital to capital. Raise. Yep. So okay. you go to that, you can go to that extra level, okay. go to that next level. I've never really understood yeah. that. Yeah. So you go to that extra level. So this, this recent acquisition in the U S was $230 million. So we, we, um, went did a capital raise. So we issue more shares, uh, 
you know, the equivalent of $230 million worth. Yeah, wow. mm. um, and that gives us the money to go and do the acquisition. So the investors say, okay, what's the money for? So we're going to do an acquisition. What's that acquisition going to do to your bottom line? It's going to do X. Okay, that's a great return on my funds. I'm happy to invest. Mm. So it's, it's really quite quite simple when you lay it up. Yeah. So, you, so you create more shares, but then but then it gets the company's bigger. So you own more. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you, yeah. yeah. You, so you create more shares. So your shareholding stays the same. So the number of shares you got remains the same. Uh, your equity value comes down because it's spread further. Yes, um, but then it's worth more. It's worth more because you're you're doing acquisition to drive profit to the bottom line. Yes. So the net effects a lot better. So I'm just going to dumb it down even more again. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone that's bought these shares, do they just hold the shares or do they get dividends from that? Are they get dividends? Oh, they do yeah, get dividends. Yeah, so essentially, you've got more and more business owners. As someone who buys a share, they're a business. So owner. more partners. More yeah. partners. So you got you got you got you got working partners. Yeah, and, you and then you've, passive, and you've passive, passive partners. partners. Yeah, yeah, that's that's insane. Correct. Yeah, yeah, they all get dividends. Yep. Fantastic. And so how does a $230 million acquisition come about? And what motivates you? Because you're you're gonna you're gonna head it up, you're gonna move over there, Scott. Is yeah, that I correct? Am. Yeah, I'll move yeah. over there um after ESA for about seven or eight months. Um uh, which is good. Um what motivates me with acquisitions, and again, it, it gets back to the the culture topic and the people piece, is, is I like working with good people and people that I know I can go forward with because I see something in them. Um, we started looking in the, in the US um, 12 months out from, from closing this deal we just did, the $230 million deal. And it was all about, to me, it was all about the people. Mm. Um, and that was slowed up somewhat with COVID. We couldn't get over there to, to have a face-to-face. -face. So we did everything reverse about. We did all the financial due diligence. We did all the checks. We did everything we could. But it was precedent on on myself and a couple of others going over there to meet them and, and really get a feel of them. You know, you've got to you've got to meet them in in a in an official front, but then you've also got to take them out and have a couple of beers and see what they're really like. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you've got to really, you know, I want to see what they're like. I want to see what their families are like. I I, I want to really d dig deep and, and just are, are they through. stepping off the line? Are they going to step forward off the yeah. line? Mm. And do they believe in, in our culture piece and people piece? Because it's about fifty fifty. I find some people buy, believe in culture, and some people don't. And I reckon it's about 50-50. Well, I think 20 years ago it was like 90-10. Yeah, right. You know? So you've got to see, are they 50% 50, 50 of the believers or are they the non-believers? And when we were over there, it was really clear. I travelled around with them for 10 days and it was pretty evident early that they were um, uh, believers, really good. The principal over there, the CEO, yeah, a really nice guy, family guy, uh, still plays ice hockey. So team sport's a big thing. Mm -hmm. If someone's played team sport, that's a really good indicator you can work in, fit in our culture. Um, and, and that was the big tick for us. And I thought, yep. Yeah, can go forward with these people and we, we close the deal. But when we look for an acquisition, it gets back to driving energy, integrity, motivation, same, same. And it's a similar business model as far as it's in the insurance disaster or yeah, catastrophic it is. or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, it is, but it's in, it's, it's in one sector. It's in what they call over there multifamily. So it's like apartment blocks. So okay. they, they repair um, apartment blocks that have been damaged by in insurance related events yes. or defective works. So th th there was the opportunity. I thought, well, great, they're in one lane or one category, we can now take our blueprint we've got in Australia, yeah. make Safe Express insurance, yeah. and we can drop it in there exactly yeah. the same and build out the partnership model there. Which yeah. is How good is that? And then, again, not a, not attached to external markets. No. Always going to be a need for it's it. Always And then disasters. you bring your model and your people and expand That's it out right. again. But, again, it's back to the people again. Like You haven't even mentioned it's the, the business. Yeah. No, it's, it's you haven't even mentioned where the numbers. business was at. No. The numbers, was it doing any good, wasn't it? Yeah. It's they built. They were people. People. They're people. And and, and, and yeah, the and, size of the market over there as well. It just be, it's huge. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. Yeah. No, the 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 people are great. The two the two main people the people that step forward. You know, yeah. Re really good. So yeah. How good is that? So you're going to be, or you are, the global CEO. Yeah. Of these companies. That sounds like a big role. Yeah, it is a big role. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still got time for the fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, appreciate your time. Yeah. You talk about the people. And being close to those people and making sure they're moving up the ladder, does that get harder as the peak gets higher and you're yeah, you're, you're you're at the top? Is that again back to the people it doing it for people. you? No, it gets back to the people and not losing sight of it. You know, so t twice a year we do a full blown what we call a full blown talent review. So twice a year it takes three days uh, biannually that I sit down with our managers and go through every single staff member. Yeah, and to identify that. Okay, so how many staff members, Scott? Just for some context, it's about eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred. Jeez. So we go, you go through every one. Every single one. Oh, every single wow. one. So the manager brings in their team. And okay, okay, tell me about this person. Where are they at? Okay, they're on a progression plan. I can work them into a partnership. This person here, uh, vanilla, not really doing much. Okay, unfortunately, we're going to have to exit that person. Um, and, and you've just got to see it. So we make sure we, we don't let people down. 
Yeah. People, people have come in and they've been sold the story, which is real and it's genuine. We have to deliver. Yeah. And you, and, and you stay, like you're, you, you know, you stay in that. So 1800, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're yeah. going, is that guy moving? Yep. That guy or girl moving? Correct. If they're not moving, what are we doing to move them? Because we don't want to lose them. Correct. And when you say exit, you mean yeah. chop? Yep. Yeah. Lemonade. <laughs> Lemonade. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, because, you know, we, we, we said at the start we need growers. We, yep. yeah. you, know, you can come into our business, no problem, but you've got to help us grow the business, and that's the number one thing. We'll teach you everything. We'll support you, and, and we'll, we'll um, support you to success, mm. but you've got to do your bit. Yeah, up for the fight. Yeah, and the growers, the the people that are the rock stars, they're relying on you to make sure you're surrounding them 100%. with rock stars. That's right. If they start to see yeah. a couple of vanillas creep in, Correct. they start to go, maybe this isn't the place that Scott sold me. Hundred percent. Yeah, that's a hundred percent. It's not fair to them. Yeah, you know, it's not fair to them. That, that's not the story. So how does that look when you move to America or you're there now and you dominate America? How do you go through the thousands of employees there as well as here? Uh, yeah, I have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Just find It'll time. But, it but, sounds like but, it's right on top but, of the list. Yeah, and, and, and it probably sounds like it's the fish rots at the head, right? Yeah, so yeah. you get those two guys you're talking about, the, the right guys. That's right. And then if those guys have got the right guys and it sort of feeds down, yeah, then you know the information that when you go over, you can Correct. be confident in what's coming back. Exactly right. Yeah, yep. exactly right. I love it. Because your thinking's, your thinking's aligned. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, aligned, yeah, it's that, it becomes, that's how important. It becomes quite easy. When your thinking's not aligned, it's like you're fighting City Hall to convert people. Mm. Yeah. yeah. If it's not aligned, it's not aligned. Yeah. But if it's aligned, it's a pretty easy conversation. Mm. Yeah. Scott, I've got, I got one for you, mate. I'm super interested to hear about what your uh, appetite is for, like, risk um, and, and how you sort of look at failure. So I'd imagine early days, you know, you backed yourself in to do that $12 million acquisition of John's Ling back then. Like what gave you the confidence for that? And you, you mentioned before that you, um, you'd failed many, many times or you'd, you'd made plenty of mistakes. Like were you self-aware or aware enough at a young age that, hey, man, this is just part of the process or did you learn that as you went along and then became more comfortable with it, I suppose? Uh, b- business intelligence I definitely learned as I went along. Um, you know, when I first started in business, I couldn't read a P&L. You know, so you learn, but 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 I think I came with a, a, a an over exuberant optimism. You know that, that I'll, crazy I'll, find, I'll find a way. Yeah, I'll, I'll find a way. You know, I'll find a way. So I always knew I could sell, so I thought as long as I can sell something, I'll sell a piece of carpet, I'll be right. Okay. You know, so you know that was my fallback. I can sell. You know, so I'll, I'll just learn on the way. But you, you make every mistake under the sun. Yeah, and that's and that's a common theme, isn't it? Yeah, you good your good friend Scott Emery. Um, yeah. Heard, heard the same words come out of his mouth. I just had deja vu. Yeah. Yeah. But exactly the same. You just got to keep bowling on and believe and yeah. get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Yeah, Tomorrow's right. another day and we'll figure it out tomorrow. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Well, you have to. You got to keep going forward because there's no fallback. There's no, there's, you know, I'd, I couldn't go to my family and say, look, I, I made a blue. Can you can you spot me some money? Yeah. yeah that, that, was, that wasn't an option. Yeah. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. so and you, you had to figure it out. And do you think that raises the stakes? Oh, definitely. You know, raises the stakes that there isn't a fallback. Yeah, absolutely. there isn't a parachute. Yeah, well, it's a different mindset, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. You just have to find a way. Yeah, and, and no, it's a, upon you. Yeah. It's human nature, man. If there's a crack, people will find it. Yeah. If there's no crack, then you know you just yeah dialed in. How good is that? That's, That's all it. fantastic. Um, I'd love to touch on because you are so passionate in this space. Is is the philanthropy sure that you're involved in? Um, you've got the Star Ball. You've been founder and chairman of that. Founded about 24 years ago, I believe, and a charity that raises circa 1.5 mil a year. And you've got the EB charity that that, that I know is close to your heart. Yep. You know, you started that a long time ago, Scott. You know, like that giving back. Can you can you talk a little bit about that and and where that started, where it is today? It sounds like a very big beast. Beast. Like we speak to a lot of people, and you know, the 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 the, the charities that you've got here, they're probably right up there. Um, so it must be must must motivate you a lot to to give back and and build these charities and make a difference. Find uh, that and yeah. find the cure, the I'm cure go, for EB. Yeah, yeah. I, I am very mo- very motivated. Um, you know, back it, it just really started from thinking. You know what, I'm I'm pretty lucky. I got I got four healthy kids, and you know I'm pretty lucky. None of them are sick, so you know we we need to do our bit. So it just came from a I think a moral obligation to to do some do the right thing. Um, and then, then, then I thought, well, what can I do? And, you know, I'm very lucky to have a good network of friends, you know, so I reached out to my good friend, Mark Walkley, you know, well, shout yeah. out walkers, <laughs> <Run your Walkley. laughs> um, who, who I knew, you know, Mark, you know, Mark's one of those great, generous giving guys. And I thought, well, beauty, Mark, Mark will help me. Um, if, if then Mark and I can direct this and start building some committees, 
etc. So we sort of knew that through our network we could we could build a co- committees and and people to to support the charity. So we really again set up the structure, and then supported those people on the committees to then fundraise and and do what they've got to do. So we probably gave it the the structure and the direction, and then we give it the push. And back to the people, the right people are back plugged right in as well, no doubt. Yeah, back to the right people on the committees, which, yeah. which is really good. So yeah, it's a, it, you know we, again we we it's just something we, we've got to do. You know? Yeah, hundred percent. So EB, that's that's a skin disorder in in kids. It is. And the research you did found that no one was really no one was really pushing it. In the end, you found somewhere. Yeah, that's right. So EB is a, a very rare skin condition that um, lacks a protein in your skin called collagen seven, yes. which pretty much um, doesn't allow your skin to bind to your body. So it's like your your skin just peels off. Mm. Um, very sad, and it's. It's known as the cruelest disease known to mankind because because it is the most painful. It's it's like the little the poor little children uh, have someone hit them with a blowtorch on their bare skin every day. Mm-hmm. And that's how they, that's how they wake up. It's a, it's horrendous. Um, yeah, so so we we're, we're really committed to, to to find a cure for that. We 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 started about we formed the committee. I went to Mark again and and, and um, uh, one of my business partners, Eric, Erica Lord, and we, and we said we'd form a committee. Um, it took us 18 months to research the research around the world to see where to research the research, yeah, yeah. see what was being done because we didn't want to double up on what may have may or may yes. not have already been done, and and we went we went everywhere. It was pretty pretty solid effort, and then we found in New York there was a, a company over there called the EB Research Partnership. We, we, we were called the EB Research Foundation. Partners, yeah, EB Research <laughs> Partnership, and they were pretty much doing what we we were doing, but they were probably eight years ahead of us. Yes, um, so they had a group of. Um, uh, scientists in place um, to look at the scientific research. So what happens is um, scientists will start looking at, at finding um, a cure for a certain disease, you know, it could be uh, a- anything at all. So scientists will try and find a cure and then develop it into a drug yes. and then obviously uh, copyright and develop that drug and everyone makes a lot of money. Mm. Um, you know, it's a very lucrative business and, and, and a good business because you need to have all these these um, cures and, and medications. Um, so Sorry. So, so we, so what happens? The scientists then pitch to foundations and organisations for funding, right. for the money. Mm. So, we've got a, we've got all those people pitched to us, but we put together a, in America. They'd put together a scientific, scientific advisory board of seven scientists, uh, in, independent scientists, who will review the request for funding. So they for EB. So they say, look, I think I'm working on something in EB. This looks great. I've got this medicine, but I need half a million dollars. So it goes to our scientific advisory board now and they'll assess it. And they go, you know what, I think this this guy's way off track. We, we, we won't approve that. I think this guy's got something here, he's got merits, we'll approve the funding for that. That, that sounds great. like the most important bit. It yeah. is. It's, it like, is. it's like being involved in the right racehorse. Yeah, that's you know, right. You got, if, if you go down the wrong path. That's right, you waste your money. You're gone. Yeah, yeah. that's and, right. And how close are we, uh, Scott, to finding a cure? Uh, there's, there's, there's one that's uh, gone through stage three in the USA. Um, so a cure... A cure is a really big word with EB, but but getting close to finding a cure, close to finding a medicine that that, that will help a lot, uh, is very close. There's one drug that now has gone past stage three, uh, which is really good, and that should come out in the next six months. That not not, not a cure, but but manageable, but, makes it manageable, manageable, yeah. manageable, manageable, and make make life a lot easier for the EB kids. So it's close. So you guys have got you created the. Uh, they're doing the research through the charity, yeah. and then you find a cure or, or a medicine that helps, and then you get that license. And is it you guys, the charity, that funded the research that benefits from the, the you know, by pat- patenting or whatever? And then and they that's right. So and then you can use that money to then do more research. So ah. it sort of feeds, that's insane. That's exactly that's right. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Pick that up, Benny. That's yeah, the goal, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, no, because yeah. that's the goal, right? Yeah. You do that. That's right. By doing that initial research, so the, yeah. yeah, that's correct. So the um. The gentleman heads up EB Research Partnership in America. His name's Alex Silva. Um, he comes from a very large investment banking and private equity um, background. So he set up um, um, venture philanthropy. Philanthropy, hard word to say. Yep. Um, so to to do exactly what you just said, Ben. So we'll fund it, but we'll own it. Yeah, that's and then that's we'll re- amazing. We'll reinvest the money into uh, you know more medicine, more research, yeah. more, more drug, more comfort, more assistance to anyone with EB. That's insane. Yeah, right? I guess yeah, I guess that's, that's the difference when when proper business people go and do this stuff. And good people, mm. yeah, good, good people, the, and they, yeah, yeah people. exactly, and they grab the reins. That's yeah. the difference. Instead of trying to feather their own nest, yeah. that's right. feed. It feed goes, goes back around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's so, amazing. So it's good. It's a good structure, and we'll, we'll get there. We'll just yeah. keep, keep doing our thing. 
keep doing play, it. Play our part, yeah. It's yeah, awesome, mate. Yeah, awesome. So, um, okay. The star ball, Scott? Yeah, star ball's um, really good. We started that in, in 1998 with, with Mark. Um, and that, that just ticks along now. We have balls in Darwin, um, Canberra, Sydney and Melbourne. Um, raises raises funds that raises about 1.5 million dollars a year, yeah. and that Starball's very well managed now. Uh, we don't have to do a lot there, uh, so we just simply provide the funds to them. Yep. Um, they've got a you know their CEO Louise Baxter does a great job, and um, yeah, they're they're really well managed, really re- well run, and do a great job. So we just try and contribute funds to to support them. Play your part. Play our part. Nice. Yes, yeah, it's good. Great, great, fantastic, fantastic. Well, I guess I got I got one of the last ones. We're sort of wrapping up now, um, Scott. I, I guess um, being such a successful businessman, um, and we've learnt some, got, heard some good gold today. What's probably the best advice you could give to three young guys in here who are on their business journey? What What's the best advice I guess you could give us or anyone else out there who's starting a business journey, starting maybe a small subcontractor business, and you know? Yeah, I, I'd say um, I'd say get the structure right. Yep. Get the structure right and believe in the structure. And go no, that structure is is sound, and then, and then find the right people. Right people. Yeah. Find the right people, and then give first. Then 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 help them get to success. Give. Be- yeah, give. Yeah. Because you, you've got to back them the in. The reverse to what most yeah. people do. Take take take. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you've got to back yeah. them into success yep. and give first. Because if you believe in them, you believe in them. Yeah. If you don't want to give first, yeah. then you're not believing in them. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you've got them on board and you believe in them, well, mm. why not support them? You, you said Good. you had four kids earlier, Scott. Have you uh, triggered something? And are they entrepreneurial as well? The the kids? Uh, yeah, they are. They're, they're, I have three daughters. They all they all they've all got children, and they they work for themselves. Uh, and my son's one of the partners in John's Link. So yeah, they're, they're a little bit entrepreneurial. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, awesome, awesome, Scott. Um, what's next? You go into the states for eight months, John's Ling. More acquisitions, you know, is that is that the yeah. play? Yeah, the play is, is that to, what motivates you every day? Yeah, it does. The play is to go to John's Ling and grow, grow the US. Yeah. You know, the, the opportunity in the US, you know, it's, it's, it's mammoth over there, just just mammoth. Um, so I just want to go over there and really immerse myself in, in that landscape. You know, I, I think I know a little bit about it, but but what I think that'd be 1%. Yeah. You know, I really want to immerse myself and get a real feel and touch. Is that a rebrand over there as well? So is that going to be a John's Ling? Or? Uh, no, that's that's currently called Reconstruction Experts. It'll just be a John's Ling company. We won't rebrand it because it's a pretty good, pretty good brand name. Yep. Um, yeah, so to do that and then really go on a talent search. Yeah, you know, because that's amazing, like, you know, um, turning over circa 850 mil here in Australia on, you know, pimple of the earth to go over to the States. That sounds like a really exciting journey. Yeah. Sounds like you're just getting started. Yeah, well, it is. <laughs> it is because the, the, the funny the – funny, uh, Stat there is is we do eight fifty in Australia population twenty four million yeah that's uh, market size California got a population thirty three million <laughs> Texas wow. Texas got a population twenty eight is that million. national the the yeah, acquisition yeah. so it's full national as well yeah, yeah. wow so we, we've you know you go state by state we, if we can do what you know, yeah. a, a little bit of what we do here in each state fifty two states in the states yeah, fifty. Yeah. 50 states in the States. Wow. Yeah. Got to count the stars, Pete. <laughs> How good's uh, F45 Dan feeling right yeah. now? He's, he's going to be going over there. <laughs> he's got a big, as an, big as career an e- ahead of him. Feeling good. Hasn't he pulled the right run? Yeah. Yeah. Before we go, can we hear a little bit about Nike? Like, I'm super intrigued around how that comes about. Like you like you said, you grow, I'm a Greensboro boy myself. Yep. So how, uh, yeah, a guy, a kid from Greensboro ends up with the uh, the rights to, mm. to one of well, the so biggest one brands. Of, one best, of the biggest. Best brands, biggest. Arguably, I don't know. Yeah. It, mate, I, best brands be, in the world. Nike, maybe Coca-Cola. top 10 brands. Yeah. It has yeah. to be. Yeah, it is. Um, it's a funny story, I guess. I was I was up in Byron Bay over Christmas 2010. Um, I was up there with some friends. Adrian Gleeson was one of them. You might remember Adrian from playing footy at Carlton. He's also yeah. on our board. Yeah. And I got a call and, and it was just a, a guy who said, look, I've got a potential opportunity for you. It's in retail. I said, oh, okay. And uh, I said, what is it? He said, I can't tell you, but it's a top 10 worldwide brand. I said, well, you have to tell me yeah, what it is. No. <laughs> I work, I work <laughs> for all. <Yeah. laughs> so, he said, I want to come up and pitch it to you. I said, well, there's no point. You've got to tell me who it is, for one. <laughs> um, and uh, otherwise, there's no point. So he, he said, oh, it's Nike. He said, Nike are going around the world offering retail licenses. I said, well, aren't they already retailers? He said, well, they're actually not. They're actually distributors. They have a couple of Nike branded stores, Nike Towns, but they're really not retailers. They sell into Rebel Sport, Athletes Foot. Uh, they're actually distributors. They don't really have a retail presence. A couple of stores here and there, but nothing serious. However, they're granting retail licenses around the world. They want to double their revenue. So I said, look, you, you can come up, but I'm, but I'm really not that interested, to be, to be mm-hmm. honest. I'm, I'm not a retailer. and you know, but Come up, I just don't want to waste your time. 
and he was very persistent. Um, Must have been a good pitch, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was very persistent. He came up and he- and Perry he, Jordans. He, yeah, that's right. <laughs> he came up and pitched a deal. At that time, I'd, I'd filled Adrian in, and Adrian and I met, met with them. Um, he, he pitched a deal and explained what it was. You know, they want to double the revenue, not retail licence. He, he, he then- uh, he then told me what he wanted for it, and I said, "Let's go, let's go to the pub and have a beer. That won't be happening." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, we sold it on. Four months later, we actually did a deal, um, which, which which was good, and it's been a, you know really good business. It's 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 um, I don't get involved in it day to day. I meet meet with the guys that run it monthly. So you've just got good people. Yeah, good people, really yep. good people that run that. Um, yeah, and it's been been a really good really good investment. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah, good. Super interesting. Yeah. What a brand. Did you take him to your pub up in Byron? <laughs> 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 I 